Welcome to the Anti-Fragile Mindset Podcast. And today we have a very exciting interview with one of Canada's best male competitors and truly beautiful to watch. He was born on May 31st, 1999 in Toronto, Canada. And although he originally represented Poland, we are so thankful that he is now representing Canada on the national and international circuit. He won two gold medals on the ISU Junior Grand Prix Series and represented Canada at three World Junior Championships, as well as a bronze medal at the 2019 Finlandia Trophy, one of the 2019-2020 season figure skating challenger series. And with a stunning performance this year, he became the 2020 Canadian Senior Men's Figure Skating Champion. And he follows in the amazing footsteps of his coaches, Tracy Wayman and Gregor Filipowski at the York Region Skating Academy. And he is known by his YouTube handle as Romsky, where he lets his fans inside his life and training. And I am so honored and thrilled to welcome to the Anti-Fragile Mindset Podcast, Canada's Senior Men's Figure Skating Champion, Mr. Roman Sadowski. All right, so we have on the podcast today um, a very special skater and one that I absolutely love watching, and I I am a big fan of his skating. I just want to introduce Roman Sadowski. So thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, and thanks for that intro. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, you're an awesome skater, and I, I just love watching your artistry. It's really, really beautiful, really inspiring. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you had you had a big year. Talk to me about, you know, and this being a, a mindset podcast and and, you know, helping younger skaters to develop their mindset tools um, must have been a very disappointing year for you having one Canadians. And yeah. A beautiful skate and and then having COVID shut down. Um, can you talk to our listeners and mm-hmm. tell them kind of what you went through emotionally and mentally when you when you heard the news and then, you know, how it progressed and so many months off? Um, well, first of all, I felt it was very, very fast, like unexpectedly fast. So we didn't get like very official news. It was sort of like we were skating one Friday and I remember clearly it was it was Friday the 13th. So it was March 13th. <laughs> And I, I feel like, I think Dylan Moskovich was um, at our club and he was coaching. And I was talking to Dylan. He's like saying, oh, you know, clubs in Montreal are closing. I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's crazy. And I never even thought about it. And that exact day, we got an email uh, from the city saying that, oh, uh, yeah, we're closing all facilities after four o'clock. We're like, wow. And that was like really extreme. And so the first thing we did was we kind of tried to... Um, coordinate with other clubs because all the clubs are sort of to scramble and um it's a good thing I, I have a lot of relationships and uh, close relationships and ties in the skating world so I was having um a lot of people reach out to me and trying to help but uh <laughs> very soon it became a much bigger problem because everyone was shutting down and then it, it almost became like everyone else was looking uh for help from us <laughs> and people are thinking oh where do you find ice uh, how are you going to find ice and eventually we sort of realized that um it was getting a lot more serious, like the whole health risk. And we were watching all of it happen. And obviously like we wanted to um, like stay protected and keep everyone protected, but it was just very disappointed that it had to be that way, you know? And uh, I was training well. Um, It was nice that I was done the season and it was time to sort of begin a new development period. And that's sort of the best development period that March, April, May, and then, After that, you usually start going into new programs, but I sort of missed that three months of good development. I could have been working on new skills and unfortunately that didn't happen. And that was probably the biggest disappointment for me was that that timing, I feel, I felt like I could develop and and try new things. And it's that part that I didn't get to do, unfortunately. For sure. So how did you deal with that disappointment? Like, you know, what tools have you learned to be mm-hmm. able to, what did you utilize during that time? Um, 
at first I tried to just sort of uh, keep that training mentality and, and really focus on training, even if I'm not on the ice. And so I have to thank my coach a lot for this. So she kept me busy and uh, she got involved in, in teaching some classes for my home club and uh, in a way kind of forced me to stay in shape. So if I'm, for example, running a core class, I'm going to have to keep up with the kids that I'm teaching, right? It was kind of cool that uh, I was distracted (laughs) and yet still focused. Yep. Yeah. It it was good that I was distracted and focused at the same time. And sometimes, you know, like I I am like, as like, how do I say this? Like deep inside, I feel like like an athlete, right? So there's that athletic drive. So it felt... I felt fine working out off the ice. I felt fine going on, let's say, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 kilometer bike rides. I felt fine doing that. Even one time I tried, I'm not a runner, but I actually tried to run 10K. I didn't make it. I'll tell you right now, I I stopped at eight because my feet were dying. But I had those moments where I was like inspired and motivated to do stuff. But then I also had moments where I'm like, okay, like where is this going? And the hardest part was we never had uh, a clear sight of a destination. It was just sort of mindless training, which was kind of tough. That was, that was for me, the toughest part was, I guess, going in and out of being really determined and then doing something like running 10 kilometers and then, and then going down into like, okay, um, I could be training every day right now, but if I'm not going to skate until like October, like what's the point? So it's just sort of battling back and forth and just trying to push through all those negative thoughts of the way. Yeah. And when, when that motivation kind of, um, those moments where it kind of dove down a little bit and you're, you're doubting, like, why am I putting all this time in when I don't even know what's happening? How did you then, you know, reset and, and get your, get your mindset back motivated? Um, I think for me, I guess it could be different for every person, but it was just sort of acknowledging that feeling as opposed to like um, being scared of it or trying to overly fight it. Uh, So let's say I had a a day where I was feeling really demotivated. I would maybe just take a break on some days. I'd be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to like, just take a break off training today and maybe not go the extra mile literally. (laughs) And I sort of sometimes just take a break and mentally just, um, just recover from pushing so hard. And then usually after maybe one or two days like that, then I'd be back in and I'd be okay. And I could probably go, training off the ice and um, outside by outside. I mean, literally like on my street. So I did a lot of off ice jumping. Um, I could, I could keep that up for, I'm going to say four or five days and then maybe even two weeks and then maybe one or two days. I'm like really down. Then I'll tone it down a little bit and just, just relax a little bit and then start up again. And that sort of thing. I I, I also watched a lot of skating online, not going to lie. And just seeing, um, just role models that I had in the past and rewatching that. And that sort of helped also. So stuff like that. Right. Right. And it's almost, it almost sounds like you, you uh, were very self-aware of your needs as an athlete yeah. and your energy banks and, and what to do when you, when you felt that your energy banks were, were getting a little low and you needed to do something to, to fill them back up again. So, mm-hmm. you know, and part of um, being a mentally tough athlete, is recognizing your own states, right? Understanding what your needs are and being able to um, acknowledge them and and then have the tools and the knowledge of how to handle it. And it it sounds like you did that very well. Well, I I tried. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and so so now what's going on um, with your skating now and and what's coming up for you in the future, like near future? So... It, it became a little bit of a weird timing thing for training. Mm-hmm. Uh, they announced that Skate Canada was going to happen. So the Grand Prix se- series was going to happen, but in a very different way. Um, I didn't know how I felt about it at first because they said no audience, um, which kind of bums out a lot. And, and it also becomes only a domestic event. So it becomes a little bit less prestigious in a way. So... Like, I was happy we had an event and I was happy and looking forward to training to finally going to a destination. I was just still disappointed that it wasn't like complete normality, right? I just wanted to go and because uh, I had a good season, the beginning of the season and the ending of the season last year was 
pretty good. And so I had a score that would let me have two Grand Prix. And I was hoping to have just a normal season. And when they, when they said, oh, it's going to be modified, like I understood why, but obviously just still disappointed with it. And so I trained the best that I could going into it. I had a pretty short time frame because we were pushed back. I didn't get my new long until beginning of September. So that would have given me like a month and a bit to kind of work on it. So it was crunch time, but I was, I was, I was ready to do it. And, and the weeks going in, I was getting much stronger really fast. And then they uh, canceled the event. So, <laughs> so like I, even though I was initially a little bit, obviously uh, bummed out that it wasn't the full out regular Grand Prix, I was still very disappointed that even as what it was planned to be didn't happen because I was training well going into it and it was nice having a new log and having something fresh. And I wanted to show people something fresh, even if it wasn't live, even if it was um, just over the internet, I wanted to sort of have a feeling of uh, performing again. But unfortunately that's, that didn't happen. So after that, like similarly, I just kind of took a day. I took that day off the day after, because I was just sort of exhausted from like building up and then just abruptly stopping. And then after that, now we're now we're just starting to build up again because that was uh, what a week and a half ago. So now we're slowly kind of building back up as if um, as if we were initially going to compete in December, which seems to be what it's going to be. So now it's just a slow build. In December, we're going to have a virtual event for challenge. I still don't really know how that's going to go down. <laughs> again, I don't like it, but if if that's all I can take, then that's all I can take. Right. And so, you know, when you, when you think of um, dealing with disappointment um, for other skaters also dealing with this, what's your best advice that you, what has worked for you, what, what you've done in the past, um, what would your advice be to them? Um. Like, like particularly this disappointment? Just yeah, like... with the disappointment of, of, you know, because as we move forward and um, competitions are slowly starting to be scheduled and then pulled back or delayed or canceled, mm-hmm. um, how, to, how to handle that mentally, how to deal with that? What, what tools would you advise are the best that you've found? Mm. I don't know if this is the right thing to say, but like like be prepared because you sort of know what kind of like at least for me i'm aware of the kind of like life that we're living in right now i wasn't surprised when they canceled it definitely disappointed but i wasn't surprised and i was kind of ready to sort of have that plan b plan c plan d plan e so i sort of had okay if this cancels then what do we do next or if this gets canceled what do we do next and basically i already knew what would happen and i think just being prepared and ready that knowing that there is still something after maybe it's not an actual event maybe it's just a new process of training or maybe it's you know what maybe if I have an open window maybe I'll start working on new skill development so it's just sort of having all these potential outcomes and potential opportunities afterwards and being prepared that way that way you have somewhat of a um, like a target and somewhat of a destination and not completely going blind Right. And so it, it, from what it sounds like you're saying is that you're, you're moving the goals to sort of shorter term goals and yeah. daily process goals and, and, you know, looking at everything as, okay, if, if I don't do this, what's the opportunity to, to then do something else, right? Yeah, for sure. It's never not just, okay, it's devastated, it's terrible, mm-hmm. it's awful, but to, to always look for some opportunity and what you can do instead. Yeah, definitely. That, that's a big thing is it's, if you can focus on still some kind of development and, and some goals, even on a day-to-day, it keeps you focused and helps you just grow overall. Mm-hmm. If you focus on, basically focus on things you can get or have as opposed to things that you're losing. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. And so for, you know, one thing that I've heard a lot of complaints about, or not so much complaints, but just challenges is with the virtual competition. How do you get that extra, you know, performance? It's okay. You can call them, you can call them complaints. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> always looking on the positive side, trying to mm-hmm. model what I teach. Um, so, you know, it's, it's how do you like get the best out of yourself, that, that extra factor that is that spark, the, the uh, performance when you're in an empty building and you're not hearing the crowds and you're not feeding off of the energy. Like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to kind of treat it like, a cause I know that it's going to be streamed. So I just kind of have to just imagine in my head that many people, and I don't think it'd be very hard to imagine. Uh, once I'm there and skating, I know people are going to watch. I'm going to have a small feeling of, of pressure, a small feeling of that performance anxiety, which I actually like. I don't like skating in a dull environment. <laughs> Right. So that's just sort of what I'm going to do. And I think honestly, for me personally, no matter what kind of performance, I think I'll still feel something. I don't Mm -hmm. think it'll be the same. I don't think anything will make it the same. And bottom line, I'm just going to treat it as it is. So even if I don't feel 100% like in the performance, I'm just going to do whatever I can to make it feel that way. And another worry I sort of had was that it being streamed, people don't get to see like, it's hard to see speed or ice coverage or see anything through a, um, a camera. So that's my biggest worry is that maybe people or, or even the judges are going to have a harder time fully enjoying the program that I worked on so hard. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait when I actually am able to perform it in person, but I'm just going to try to, I don't know, milk it the best that I can on camera. <laughs> well, it's definitely going to, to push the, um, your abilities to really emote, to to mm-hmm. really see if you can get what you're feeling and your your choreography across the screen, right? Sometimes we talk about you know when you when you mm-hmm. compete to a massive um, auditorium or a massive arena, you know you're trying to to um, perform to the top seats, right? That big performance yeah. right so this will be like another challenge where you you're having to can i get it can i get my feeling across the screen right yeah yeah, yeah. and so your perspective on how you're going to view this event um can either hinder you or it can right. really help you yeah and- absolutely yeah and, and and for me i think it, it'd be i think uh what is that word i can't find that word uh, destructive my performance is if I start getting into the mindset of saying, oh, it's not a real performance or, mm-hmm. oh, they're not going to see the real thing anyway, or it's it's not the same anyway. You know, I think bottom line, like I do have these thoughts in the back of my head. It's not like they're going to disappear completely, but still focusing that, you know what, this is an opportunity. This is still a performance. It might be different. It, it, it might be hard. It might be really hard at the end of the day, but no matter what, like I'm going to try my best to emote and like you said just get the emotions through the screen right exactly and so um you know that's really 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 tough and i know a lot of young skaters are really finding it difficult to motivate themselves to um go that extra distance but you know knowing that perspective and hearing uh, how you struggle with that too and and what you how the plans you're going to put into place to to help you get over that is is really great advice for them and, and good suggestions mm-hmm. So thank you for that. Cool. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, I'd love to talk a little bit about what's going on in your life outside of skating. What sure. um, what great kind of cool things are happening with your YouTube channel? And you want to tell everybody what your what your plans are, what your hopes are with it? Oh, man, I just want to get Internet Famous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bottom line, I just sort of wanted to, uh, when I initially made it, because I, I follow a lot of vlog channels and basically, at least in my perspective, it's just sort of a way of, of letting people in on like sort of the inside scoop, if you will. And it it's sort of, I want it to be as like as honest, as, an, as transparent and as relatable as possible, right? So I wanted people to see like, oh, what is it like when I go to the rink or how do I feel when this happens or how do I feel after a competition or... Um, it could be something so random too. Let's say I'm going on a trip somewhere. I will take, I'm kind of taking these people with me, whoever's following around, right? And that's sort of what I wanted as I wanted that sort of like, like relatable. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like I'm not like, 
like superhuman, right? So I wanted that sort of relatable vibe to that thing. And I, f- I feel like it's going well. And I throw in some short films here and there and then just sort of random stuff. Whatever I feel like, I just post. And I don't know. I mean, I'll see where it takes me. Um, it, it grew a lot, I guess, during the pandemic because people have nothing to do. <laughs> so <laughs> they just sort of follow along. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when you, when I looked up your YouTube channel and, and, uh, you know, you've got a great photo there with, um, you know, photography, is that a a, a real passion, uh, another interest of yours? Yeah, I do. I do like a lot of photography. I post quite a bit on Instagram. Um, I like videography a lot too. It was sort of all these things that came together. I'm also really big into computers and stuff. And that's just been since I was growing up. And then basically I just kind of put everything together and that's how the YouTube channel was born. Like photography, like videography, love computers. So I end up doing everything on my computer, I'm editing videos, editing photos. And then just all of it just came together, essentially. Yeah. And it just kind of morphs and grows as you do it. And you kind of find that you go in, in different directions and what works and what, you know, inspires you, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and it's um, one of the things that I think some high level athletes and especially skaters um, get into the habit of, of being mono focused with their skating and, and not really having outside interests. Would you say that this is helping you to kind of ground you? Uh, yeah, um, I, I understand. I, I understand skaters like if they want to be super hyper focused and even me going into a competition, I don't post as often, sometimes not at all. It just becomes, like, let's say I'm doing a vlog at the rink. So I didn't, people don't necessarily see the whole process of it, but it, it's, it's a little funny because I sort of, I have to go to the rink, I have to set up a tripod, I have to put down the camera and I walk back and forth, talk to the camera, go skate. And so in a very high competitive environment and, and um, like prepping for competition, that's, that's a little bit... Um, it, it is hindering training a little bit. Yeah. Right. So the distraction to your focus, right? It is a little bit. So in those situations, I sort of zone in and that's why I don't post as often. I also don't have time to sort of edit because once I get home during those times, I'm pretty exhausted. I still just want to just relax and do whatever I want at home. I don't have to necessarily edit, even though it's something I love to do, but it's, it's just sort of something really depends on the time. And I, I like letting people in and I like people seeing the process and most of what people see are either like what I did in, over the pandemic was the process of coming back and getting back into skating. Mm-hmm. So I did a whole skate, a uh, whole series of back on the ice and people could see the progression and sort of the steps I had to take the ups and downs overall. And then, or sometimes I'll do like choreography videos and, and let people see choreography videos. And then sometimes I'll do competitions, uh, sorry, videos of comp after competition. So post competition stuff. I don't really go much into really pre-competition because that's when I kind of zone in and do my thing. Sometimes I might add a clip or two of what was happening before, but it's definitely not my biggest focus. So I understand skaters who want to be really private. Um, I find, I just sort of try to try to find this balance, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just try, try to find this balance of A, training is priority, but B, it also can't be like completely like, it can't be making me like literally lose my mind, right? Yeah. There has to be this, this, this balance. And in a way it kind of helps uh, staying connected to the fans and, and hearing e- even other people. Like sometimes I don't feel 100% great about my skating, but then even if you h- see a couple comments here and there, people like, for example, Oh, I love your spins or this jumps looking much better because sometimes it's easy when you're training yourself to get tunnel vision and just sort of get obsessed with certain details. But then sometimes hearing other people's opinions gives you more um, just more perspective on what's what's going on with your skating and stuff. So it's kind of cool that there's that kind of dynamic. But yeah, overall, I'd say finding a balance is really important. Mm-hmm. I'm not 100% open, right? I, I, I don't go full out, full <laughs> out during competition and let everyone in. But yeah, for me, by far, the biggest point is just finding balance. Balance. Absolutely. And so how do you how do you deal with critics? Because with, with with every every time you put yourself out onto onto social media, um, those there's always going to be people who are critical, 
And, and so how do you shield yourself from, from that interfering with your confidence? Okay. So it's funny that you mentioned that because um, with critics, there's also a lot of um, like intense fans, right? So I'm kind of lucky that if there's sometimes a critic that's like being really uh, obnoxious or saying things that are completely uncalled for, usually it's my fans that go after them. So it's <laughs> like, I'm fine. I've got my security guards. <laughs> <laughs> that's very but true. No matter what, like when you read something and, and, and it's about you, you're going to have some, some care for it, right? Regardless, even if you realize it's something like completely like, for the lack of a better word, just insane. Like some of the things that are, that are being said can be can be insane. Mm -hmm. There's still a moment where you're like, oh, whoa. And it, it might tick you off a little bit. But then at the end of the day, it's just like, I sort of realize that, okay, this person is a fully anonymous, usually, like completely anonymous and just sort of writing anything. Maybe they're not even being intentional about it. Maybe it's completely, um, they didn't realize it was maybe uh, offensive obviously depend on the comment but there are times where people just slip and say something weird on the internet and just overall I just try to focus on the positives um sometimes uh, uh being critical is a good thing sometimes they'll say something that's actually like truth like I, I, I don't know exactly I can't think of it from the top of my head but maybe maybe people are saying um ah, I really can't think of anything but there are some critiques that you can look at and be like, you know what, maybe, maybe this should be changed or I can improve in this area. And then others that are just really unnecessary. I just sort of, I'm the type of person that doesn't really get affected by those things, but mm -hmm. I can see people who, who would take them really close to heart. And bottom line, I think it's just remembering that it's the internet and the internet's a weird place. And you just sort of got to focus on what matters most. And that's, a, the people like the fans that really care and watch your progress and, and two, the, the progress that you're actually, actually making. Because sometimes there are some comments about that, but just yeah. focusing on that and then all, all is good. Yeah, and having, having a really good perspective of um, who you are as a person and, and mm -hmm. uh, knowing exactly what your purpose is, what your focus is, who you are, and taking in each critic or or something good and and being thankful for those things but not allowing them to really hurt you not make it change how you view yourself right yeah yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. well you obviously have a very strong center and understand <laughs> what you want and and uh who you are and uh, we'll definitely be watching out for you. So where can all your fans, other than the ones that already follow you, but <laughs> new fans, where can all your new fans that I'm hoping that you'll get, where can they follow you? Well, you can follow me on Instagram, which is Roman underscore Sadovsky, or better yet, go to YouTube, which is Romsky. Okay. People ask me why. It's the first three letters of my first name, last three letters of my last name. So R-O-M-S-K-Y. You won't That's regret it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So everybody's got to go to YouTube to Romsky and watch all the great uh, improvements and get an inside and in, in Roman's life. So thank you so much for taking Thank you. Time. I know you're very busy, but uh, we'll be watching <laughs> and wishing you all the best. In, in thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, that was pretty awesome and such a fun interview. What an honor to have one of Canada's best on the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed hearing from Roman as much as I did. And I hope that if you're a young athlete, that you were able to take away from this interview some hope, inspiration and tips on how you can continue to develop your resiliency, overcome the difficulties and manage any disappointment that you're going through as competitions are delayed or possibly cancelled. Make sure you go to Roman's YouTube channel to subscribe to Romsky and follow the improvements in his skating, his artistry, in his filmmaking, photography, and share in his A Day in the Life of, or check out Roman's Instagram at Roman underscore Sadovsky. You can also view this interview on my YouTube channel at The Anti-Fragile Mindset. 
as well as catch up on my previous interviews and episodes. Join me each week as I strive to bring you, my listeners, more awesome interviews from world-class skaters and inter- influencers like Roman Sadowski to bring you the tips and tools you will need to not just survive this challenging world we live in, but to build that anti-fragile mindset to help you become the best version of you. So if you enjoyed the episode, leave a comment and suggest someone that you would like to hear from on a future podcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast and the weekly episode so that we can get noticed on the charts to bring the message of positivity and support to athletes and their support group everywhere. And if you're struggling with disappointment and having difficulty managing your emotions and frustrations, send me an email at christine at anti-fragilemindset.net. Let's set up a free consultation and get you on the path to building unshakable confidence and help you reach your dreams and goals. Follow me on social media on Twitter at FitSkate or on Instagram at Skating Mind Gym. And I hope that you enjoy, you will join me for a new Anti-Fragile Mindset episode airing every Tuesday morning. And until next time, remember, breathe and get your mental toughness reps in.